Oh my god, this is the first sit down video I'm filming in the new apartment. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do as far as like the background. I just kind of put some things behind me so it wouldn't be bare. But I am in the spare bedroom of my apartment, which is like the guest room slash my future office eventually. And it's still a work in progress. So there's definitely an echo in this room. I'm using my external microphone, so I'm hoping that that makes the audio better. Let me know your feedback on that. Also, one of my neighbor's dogs is barking and has been for the last hour straight. Uh, I'm hoping the microphone doesn't pick that up, but if it does, or the plane that's flying by outside, Still working out the kinks here, but hi, <laughs> welcome back. I am going to do a Q&A because it has been quite a while since the last one I did and I've been getting a few requests to do another one. I felt like, yeah, why not? So let me pull up the questions. I told you guys here on YouTube on my community tab and also on my hair Instagram page to leave me some questions and I got a lot so I'm gonna just answer as many as I can Okay, the first question I see is from YouTube silly but fun quick question out of these few 90s movies What's your favorite if you could pick dumb and dumber clueless happy Gilmore or mrs. Doubtfire definitely mrs. Doubtfire when I like when I think back to my childhood that is definitely one of like the standout movies that I remember. Do you still have a passion for being a hairstylist? I've been watching you for some time and from what you show, I feel like it's not your thing anymore. I can be totally wrong, but just wondering. Yes, I am still passionate about it. I think maybe it comes across that it's not my thing online because when I was still in Pennsylvania at my old salon, it was a lot easier for me to film because it was a smaller space and I had my own station and I had a lot of area to work in and it just felt like a more intimate vibe so i was constantly putting content out and showing you guys like every client practically that i was doing so my content was more hair focused whereas lately i might get like a few clips here and there of like oh here's client ones before and then here's the after but it's just not as easy for me to record in the salon where i'm at like some days it is most days it's not and it's just i don't know just because of like the way the salon is and i don't have like my own designated space there i'm wondering if if that's what it is but no i still am passionate about hair if i wasn't like i'm the type of person i have to be passionate about what i'm doing because otherwise i just like i can't I can't force myself to just do like some mundane job. And I actually have been actively working on rebuilding my clientele. Like I, I want to eventually have my own space and do my own thing and like expand my hair career. What do you like about moving states the most? I think that it's really cool to be able to start over somewhere where no one knows you and you don't have connections to anyone. Because especially where I was living in Pennsylvania, like where I grew up and spent majority of my life, it's a smaller town and like everybody pretty much knows everybody. Or if you don't directly know the person yourself, you know people that know them. So no matter what, I feel like people are always gonna have like some sort of an idea about you, some preconceived notion about you. But when you move to a totally new place where nobody knows you people can get to know you where you're at in life now they're not judging you based on like oh yeah my friend said that they knew you in high school and you used to be like this or oh you did this once upon a time and you know like they're not judging you based on anything from the past it's literally just who you are now and i've made friends here that i know like okay we really are friends because we get along and we have things in common now. We're not just friends because I've known you since we were 10, you know? What do you like most about living in North Carolina? Specifically North Carolina, I love because it's just so beautiful, especially living like where I am on the coast. It is gorgeous here. The people are super friendly and the weather is perfect. I love the humidity, 
but I also like the change in seasons. So it's like my perfect place here. It does get kind of cold in the winter, but it never gets freezing. We never have to worry about snowstorms. In the winter, it still stays sunny. The sky stays blue. It's not like up north where it's just gray and gloomy all winter long. If this is too personal, feel free to ignore me. What is your religion? I am not a religious person. I grew up technically Catholic because my mom is super Italian. So I was like baptized in a Catholic church. I did communion. I went actually to a Catholic school up until fourth grade, but I don't identify like I, I'm all for practice what you want to practice, believe what you want to believe as long as you're not hurting anybody, all the more power to you. But I don't believe in religion. Like, do I think that there's possibly a higher power? Yes, in some sense. I think I'm more spiritual, if anything. But if like I had to guess, I honestly think that everything is just a computer simulation. So that's where I, I stand on that. Tips on how to manage your finances with your income being inconsistent month to month. I feel like it's hard enough already with consistent income as an hourly employee at the moment. That's my fear that's keeping me from my dreams of becoming a full-time hairstylist. Add up all of your monthly expenses. And I'm not talking like going out to eat and getting coffee and your Netflix and whatever, like your basic bare necessities, your rent, your car payment, your car insurance, your electric bill, like those things and groceries, obviously, that have to be paid every single month in order for you to just live your life at the bare minimum. Now you know how much money you need to make each month just to survive month to month. As long as that's a number that you feel like, okay, I can make that work. And also make sure that you're aware of all of the smaller things that you might have set on like an auto pay, like, you know, a streaming service or something like that. I feel like a lot of people just spend money and aren't fully aware or paying attention to how much they're spending and how much they're making, like what's going in and out of their account. So you really need to be aware of your finances and also have some cushion, like have a savings. Before I went off on my own and like moved out into my own apartment, I made sure that I had a good amount of money saved up. So that way, if there was ever a month where I was a little bit short, I would have some money to fall back on. I would never be in a situation where I'm stuck and I have zero dollars in my bank account. And also having some type of extra safety net, whether it's like, I don't know, a little like side job. If you know somebody that you can go and like pick up work for if you need a little extra money one month or something. That's what I do, that's what works for me. It can definitely be stressful though when you have an inconsistent income because you don't really know, like things could be good for a few months in a row and then you can have like one off month where you make like half the amount of money and you're like, oh shit, now what? So just make sure that you're also like not living above your means. I try to live below my means for the most part just to play it safe. So that again, I always make sure I'm never put in like a bad situation where I don't have any money. What method of contraception are you using since getting off the birth control pill and how are you feeling since getting off of it? I've been feeling amazing. I've been off the pill now for two and a half years, I think at least. I have felt amazing. My skin has never looked better. My mood feels so much better. I felt like I was constantly in like a fog when I was on the pill and I don't feel that way anymore. I have a lot more mental clarity. My periods have been very regular. There was one time where I think I might have had COVID where it got thrown off a little bit, but other than that, it has been right on time every single month. I don't get super bad cramps. It doesn't last a long time like I feel finally like my body is working exactly the way it's supposed to and I do track my cycle I actually have one of those smart rings this is the ultra human ring by the way if you want to get one for yourself this is less expensive and also more comfortable it's not as thick and bulky as the aura ring my friend has the aura ring and she said that she prefers the like look and feel of this one. And I do have a discount code if you wanna get it. Um, but this will 
track my cycle for me but i don't even feel like i need that because i can just tell with my body where i'm at i just kind of use the app to confirm but i can tell like when i'm ovulating i can also feel it most months which is really cool. I had never experienced that before. I just feel very in tune with my body. With my boyfriend and I being long distance, luckily I don't have to really worry about it too much. But yeah, I personally just kind of use like a more natural method. I'm not giving you advice. I'm not telling you that you should do this, but so far it's been working for me and I don't ever want to get back on the birth control pill. So yeah, tracking my cycle, using condoms when necessary. With a bigger space, do you think you might get another pet? Congrats again on the move. Thank you. Um, no. <laughs> when my boyfriend eventually moves in with me, whether that's into this apartment or if we end up getting another apartment once this lease is up, I don't know, but he still has my cat, Maxie. If you've been watching me for a long time, you probably remember her. My little cat that I had with me since I was in college, since the beginning of my YouTube channel. She's still doing well. She lives with him. Honestly, she likes him more than she likes me. So he'll bring her along with him. So I'll have a cat again. But as far as getting another dog, not while I'm in an apartment. When I eventually am in a house with a yard, then I might get another dog. Ooh, what were your family's reactions to the breakup and reconciliation? How long did you wait to tell them? I didn't wait to tell them. My family, I'm very close with my family and they also know my boyfriend very well. I did a get ready with me video where I like went into all the detail about my relationship, our breakup, how we met in the first place, why we broke up, how we got back together, da 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 da. I'll link it in the description if you missed it. But he knew my family, like I met him through my family. So they were always like in the loop and knew that like we were still in contact. And there were times throughout the last like two years where it was a little bit unclear. It's like we were seeing each other kind of, but we weren't like technically back together. So I don't think they knew like all the intimate details, but they knew that like we were still in contact. And I think they figured we were gonna end up getting back together anyway. And I don't think that I even actually had like a specific conversation where I was like, yeah, we decided to get back together. It just, happened naturally and they just kind of were like oh uh, okay like they're together now I, yeah so but what they thought about it i don't know i never really asked i think you know my family obviously they like him he likes them everybody gets along but ultimately at the end of the day they just want me to be happy so my family's never been the type to like get super involved in my relationships and like express an opinion on who I should be with or what I should do in regards to that so which I'm grateful for because at the end of the day obviously it's nice to have like their opinion if there's like some concern that they want to express but like I am a 30 almost 32 year old adult so it's like it's, it's my life and my decision you know what made you want to cut your hair so short after growing it out so long and then another person asked do you miss your long dark hair sometimes like once in a while i do i actually i was watching oh, what's that movie called poor things with emma stone and she has that super long black hair and it was kind of making me miss the long dark hair, I'm not gonna lie. But for the most part, no, I don't because it was just so hot and I'm a really short person. So it, I felt like it just overwhelmed me when I wore it down. And unless I was wearing like a very plain basic outfit, I felt like I always had to put it up because otherwise I felt like it just overpowered my clothes. I love the short hair. It's just so much faster and easier to do. It feels more comfortable, like not having all the long hair on my back and shoulders. I just grew it out because I had never had my hair super long like that naturally without any extensions. And I just wanted to see like how long could I get it and how would it look? And I did it and I just kind of got to a point where I was sick of it and I wanted to go short because I've always liked how I look 
with this kind of length of hair and I was just ready for a change. So that's the beauty of hair, you know, it, it grows back. I think I am gonna grow it out a little bit longer, like not super long, but like, I don't know, maybe like down to here-ish and then I'll kind of see how I feel if I wanna go even longer or chop it again. I had multiple questions about Benny <laughs> and how he is liking the new apartment. Is there a dog park nearby for him? How is he enjoying like having more space to run around? He is loving it. We both are loving it. And yes, there's actually two dog parks in the complex where I live. He's made a lot of dog friends here. I'm also really close to a big park with a really long walking trail. So we have gone on really long walks, which is so nice because the place I was at before, there wasn't really space to walk. Like I could just kind of walk around the complex, but I could loop that whole place in like 10 minutes. But here it's a much bigger complex and there's just so much more to do, so much more for him. And I definitely can tell, like he just seems so happy. And it's been great. I love having the extra bedroom and the extra bathroom. I already had my first guest. My brother came and stayed with me for a week last week. And I actually have another guest coming to stay. My friend is getting here tonight and she's gonna stay with me for a week. In the old apartment, it was so tiny that it was a little overwhelming after, you know, a day or two. But here, it's just so much more comfortable for me and my guests. It's just been amazing. I am so grateful. If you didn't see the vlog that I posted before this video, I shared the tour of the apartment. So if you haven't seen that and you wanna see how it looks in here, all decorated and everything, you can go check that video out. But that is gonna be it for this Q&A. Thank you guys so much for sending in your questions. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer in this one, leave them down below. I can definitely do another Q&A in the future. I hope that you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you really soon in my next video. Bye.